Hey guys, Phil Vallejo here, team shooter for Team Short Action Customs. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Short Action Customs modular sizing die. On behalf of the team at Short Action Customs, thank you for your business, and we're excited for you to put the die to use. The first thing that we'll talk about is what's in the box. When you get your modular sizing die from the shop, this is what will come in the box. An instruction manual, a bag full of 1,000 and 25,000 shims, a neck shoulder bushing, and the modular sizing die assembly. The very first thing that I'd recommend is to disassemble your die to inspect it and to understand its nomenclature. This will allow you to clean it or wipe down any lubricants that are still on it from the shop. The die I'm gonna be using as an example is my 47 Lapua modular sizing die. First, I'm gonna unscrew the top cap from the die body. Then I'm gonna disassemble the top cap assembly by removing the decapping pin, the ER11 collet from the top cap, the taper adapter, and then I'm gonna remove the die lock ring. The die is composed of an ER11 top cap, an ER11 collet, a caliber specific decapping pin with a wide mouth retaining clip, also known as a C-clip, a taper adapter, the die body, a neck shoulder bushing, a die lock ring, and shims if you choose. Some things to note are that the decapping pin can be upgraded to a carbide decapping expander mandrel or a carbide expanding mandrel, which are sold separately. These will come with their respective ER11 collets. To remove the ER11 collet from the top cap, look for this machine mark on the side of it, and all you have to do is apply pressure, and it'll pop right off. To reassemble the die, place your neck shoulder bushing inside of the die body. Since I'm resizing for my 6547, I'm gonna be using a 287 bushing. Reassemble the top cap by installing the ER11 collet to the top cap. and then taking your decapping pin and sliding that into the top cap assembly. Then I'm gonna take my taper adapter and put that over the decapping pin so that it mates up with the ER11 collet. And then I'm gonna screw the top cap assembly to the die body until it is hand tight. Now for instructional purposes, I'm gonna be using a different die lock ring for this Forrester press which is the Short Action Customs Solo Lock, and that is also sold separately. One thing to note is that you can adjust the height of the decapping pin by moving the C-clip up and down on the C-clip grooves to set your desired decapping pin protrusion. I'm gonna be demonstrating setup on two different presses, the Forcer Coax Single Stage Press, which I have right here, and the Redding T7 Turret Press you'll be able to see both presses side by side as I walk through each step. Step one, once the die has been assembled, insert into the press and tighten down the top cap. It's important that you don't miss this step. This will ensure that the decapping pin doesn't move up while you're sizing your brass, which will result in not depriming your brass. I'm gonna use the sack die wrench, which is also sold separately. Once the top cap is tight, I'm gonna loosen the die lock so that I can adjust the height of the die for step two. Step two, now that the die is inserted into the press and the die lock ring is loose, I'm going to raise the ram until I get to the end of my stroke. Then I'm gonna screw the die down until it contacts the shell holder. Step three, now I'm gonna lower the ram and tighten down the die lock ring. With our modular sizing dies, you may not need to cam over like traditional dies. This is because the modular sizing die have about 15 thousandths more sizing than any other die on the market. After testing, we have found not camming over with readily available presses in combination with our modular sizing die makes sizing more consistent. Step four. For the next step, I'm gonna zero out my calipers with my headspace comparator gauge and a fired piece of brass. You wanna ensure that the piece of brass is decapped. Now I'm going to lubricate my brass with Redding Imperial dye wax, which is what we recommend. I'm then going to size the brass, wipe it down, and then measure the size brass.
Step five, we recommend sizing your brass to 1,000th to 3,000th smaller than fire brass. There are many different ways that you can adjust the headspace with the die. One, use a different shelf holder or plate that has different dimensions. Two, threading the die assembly in or out of the press. Three, adding or subtracting 1,000 shims with no more than four total shims. To do this, we're gonna remove the ER11 top cap assembly and add or remove a supplied 1,000th shim between the taper adapter and the neck shoulder bushing. I'm gonna reinstall or tighten down the ER11 top cap assembly with a wrench. We cannot guarantee that adding a thousandth shim will shorten the headspace one thousandths due to variations in brass thickness, hardness, and lubrication. Step six. Now we're gonna verify the adjustment on a different piece of clean fired brass. I will usually measure the first five and then be confident that the die is set accordingly. And that is all she wrote. Thanks for watching guys. Enjoy your new modular sizing die. If you have any questions, please feel free to email the shop, which will be provided in the links below. And lastly, you guys know the drill, keep your face on the gun.